In this video I'll show you a couple of ways to check the exciter coil and the pulse or the pickup coil from your stator. This is useful if you have a no spark condition. The first thing you'll need to do is locate the bundle of wires that's coming from your stator. In most cases you'll have a similar setup to this where you have the pickup wire as well as the charging wire from the exciter coil. They are separate. They have just uh, male and female bullet connectors and then you'll have another harness that is your charging system but these are the two we'll be focusing on the blue and white or blue and yellow are common colors for Chinese scooters that should be your pulse or pickup coil red and black or black and red are common colors for the uh, wire coming from the exciter coil the exciter coil is the one that charges the capacitor inside the CDI and the pickup or pulse coil is what basically triggers it, gives it a signal so it knows when to fire. On the other connector you've usually got charging and lighting wires and sometimes a ground wire. If you're not sure where to find that bundle of wires the easiest way is to look at the right side of your engine just above the flywheel and fan and you should see a set of wires coming out of the engine then just trace that and those will lead to the group of wires that I was just talking about and once you've located them go ahead and disconnect each of the connectors so disconnect the red and black or black and red the one from the pulse or pickup coil and then the large connector for the charging lighting and grounds then you just want to verify which side is coming from the stator so this side in my case which is the female bullet connectors is coming from the stator and these are going into the harness and CDI those I don't want to work with right now. I'll show you how to check both voltage and resistance for the exciter and the pulse or pickup coil but either way you're going to need a digital multimeter and it needs to be capable of reading AC volts as well as ohms. I'll start by connecting the black probe from my multimeter to a ground and in this case I'm just going to use the wires coming from the stator I've got a green wire that is the ground here and I'll connect the black probe to that terminal so it's making a good connection with the ground. Then I'll take the red probe from the multimeter and connect that to my blue and white wire or the wire from the pickup or pulse coil. The first way I'll show you to check the pickup coil is by resistance value. So start by setting your multimeter to ohms. And you can see I've got 145 point something kind of moving around a bit there. Then you'll need to know what the specification should be for your particular model of scooter. This is why I kind of don't like testing things using resistance values because I'm used to Chinese scooters. And for example, I looked at three different manuals, or actually four. Two of them had the same specs, but I got 140 to 200 ohms in one, 40 to 300 ohms as the values for another and 80 to 160 ohms as the values for another. Now either way this particular coil checks out and it should pass any of those but if you just use those values if you had something say 170 ohms it would pass two of those tests and fail one. It's certainly not a bad idea to check that though and especially if you have something like a Yamaha Honda or other big name scooter where the service manual should have reliable specifications. The other way I'll show you to check the pickup coil is by using AC voltage coming from it. So start by setting your multimeter to volts AC. Then you'll need to turn the scooter on, make sure it's secure, and crank the engine over while you watch the voltage. There you can see that voltage maxed out about 0.13 volts AC. What I'd like to see is about 0.3 volts to 0.5 volts AC. It can be higher than that, but most of the time about the highest I see is 0.3 to 0.5 volts AC. If I get anything under 0.3 volts, then I'll be checking the gap between the pickup and the reluctor. Since I've found that I have a weak signal coming from the pickup, I want to take a look at the pickup, and to begin, I've got to take out all of these 6 millimeter bolts with an 8 millimeter head and remove this side cover. 
What I'll try to do is to measure the gap between the reluctor, which is this raised part on the flywheel, and the contact that's down there in the center of the pickup. So I'll need to rotate the engine so that the reluctor aligns with the pickup. Once those are aligned, you need to measure the gap, which should be usually a minimum of about 10 thousandths of an inch and a maximum somewhere around 30 thousandths of an inch. Uh, you can check for the maximum using a credit card because credit cards are usually about 30 thousandths of an inch thick or you can use feeler gauges to find out exactly what the gap is. And you'll just slide that between there. 25 thousandths has a bit of resistance, so I'd say I have roughly 25 thousandths of an inch clearance. Now that should be an okay spec, but since I'm having trouble, what I'll do is loosen these two bolts and I'll try to move the pickup so that it's slightly closer to that flywheel and hopefully get something like 10 to 15 thousandths clearance. So the pickup's loose now, I can move it around a bit. I've got a 10 thousandths of an inch feeler gauge, I'm going to stick that between the pickup and the reluctor, and I'm going to push the pickup down onto the feeler gauge. That should give me my 10 thousandths of an inch clearance, and then I'll go ahead and tighten these two bolts up. Once the bolts are tight, I'll double check. I've got 10 thousandths of an inch clearance in there, it should be good for minimum clearance. After you set the gap, recheck to see if voltage increases. Sometimes output is lower than 0.3 volts with a functional pickup, so if it passes resistance checks, I would continue checking other components before replacement. Now I want to switch over and check the exciter coil, so I'll take the red probe off of the connector from the pickup coil, and I'll move that red probe so that it's touching the connector from the exciter coil. That's the red and black or black and red wire usually. The black probe can stay in the same position as it was before, attached to a good ground. Now I'll check the resistance from the exciter coil, so again I'll set my multimeter to the ohm setting. And you can see I've got 0.514 kilo ohms because there's a K up there in front of the ohm symbol. So what that is is 514 ohms. According to different manuals, that can range anywhere between 350 and 600 ohms, Again, the manuals don't agree. One says 350 to 450, and two more say 500 to 600 ohms. So in one case, I'm out of spec there, and in another case, it should be just fine. So again, this is why I don't really like the resistance values for these Chinese scooters. Now I want to switch over to check voltage coming from the exciter coil, so all I have to do is switch from ohms to volts AC. Once I switch over, just like I did with a pickup coil, I'm going to crank the scooter over and watch the voltage. So you can see there, I got above 70 volts AC. And when I'm doing this, I'm going to look for at least 50 volts AC while the scooter's cranking over. If I don't see 50 volts AC, I'll be checking my connections and possibly replacing the stator. If you complete all of these tests and you're still not sure if you should replace your pickup coil or the exciter and stator, I would suggest going over the scooter and making sure you've got good engine and frame grounds because that could potentially throw off the numbers that you're seeing. Another thing I generally do with my Chinese scooters is I try to keep a spare stator on hand as well as a spare ignition coil and a spare CDI. And the reason being as you've kind of heard me talk about in the video, Chinese scooters don't always seem to follow the rules in the service manual as far as numbers and specifications go. So if I'm not totally sure, the CDI can be swapped out very quickly and the coil can be swapped out very quickly. And then you can check when you do each of those to see if you get spark back. The stator doesn't take too long as long as you have the proper tools to remove the flywheel and reinstall it. So if all else fails, you can start replacing parts if you have them on hand to see what works and what doesn't. It's not exactly the ideal method, but it may be an easy way to get yourself back on the road. 